Are you getting yourself ready for our show? Guys, Jigs and Bigs, it's another Tuesday here. It's Bobby Rose Beef. I got Sean the Fisherman with me. It's uh, it's down the wire, guys. Christmas is less than a week away at this point. Uh, it is time to, you know, get yourselves together and uh, and make it all happen. We've got uh, we've got a good show for you this week. No guests this week. Obviously, schedules are insane right now. Uh, so we'll have some guests coming up when we get into the new year and stuff. We also have this week. We're gonna be talking actually about. Uh, couple of things we have uh we have some food topics to talk about uh and one of them involves our one of our listeners which is awesome i've said for a long time we have an amazing we have amazing listeners in general uh specifically this one listener has gone above and beyond so we're going to talk about that for sure uh we have a couple other things that we need to discuss here specifically when it comes to ice fishing and uh you know but also about locations location 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 very very important we're also going to find out how you can get your fix when it's cold you know, and it's, it's it's maybe not quite ice fishing season yet. How you can get your fix to get a little bit of timing on the water, keep things fun and interesting and kind of get get the action uh, moving, you know, and keep yourself sort of with it a little bit anyway. We have uh, we have a, a great show, all that and a whole bunch more. We got uh, Sean the Fisherman. We got a bunch of jig heads checking out this live exclusive preview, guys. Don't go too far. We got much more show coming up right, well, right after this. Alrighty, guys. It is. Well, we're recording this. It is a Sunday evening. You know, it's been uh, it's been rough. It's been rough for anglers in the Northeast. I mean, I've seen. You know, you want to talk about Northeast anglers. Uh, you know, especially those those content creators. I've seen some videos from them. It's getting it's getting slim. It's getting real slim out there. Tough to get on fish. And uh, and there's you know while there is some ice in the area, it's not uh, not down by where we're at. So so we are we're we're getting it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge out there folks but uh, christmas is this week it's coming man uh just a few more days to go and it's going to be it's going to be christmas eve before you even know it so uh this whole sort of road of getting here has been kind of bananas hopefully we are able to help you out with our online uh uh anglers uh gift giving guide which uh you know was designed to to clue you guys in sean how how are things going man how how are you how are you this evening i'm full yeah, I'm full too. We're I'm very full. full. I had uh I didn't realize. Okay, so so we we should just we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get into uh our our weeks and like what we've done in a bit, but let's just like get right to it. Um if you guys follow on Instagram, I had posted on the Jigs and Bigs account earlier today uh a picture of a succulent, juicy and delicious venison steak that I had prepared um I, I would I would probably have to say I, I had prepared uh, to uh, somewhere along the lines of like a five star chef uh, would have prepared this thing and it was dynamite. My kids had some; they loved it. Uh, my wife, she's gonna love it. I think she's gonna take some uh, with her to uh, to work tomorrow, and uh, it's, it was absolutely fantastic. And we have uh, one person to thank for the, for that. One person to thank, and that is the one and only Mister Jerry Multi Species House. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry uh, was gracious enough to uh, hook up the Jigs and Bigs dynamic duo with some venison from his freezer, and uh, I got together with Sean the Fisherman yesterday to, uh, well, we created some holiday traditions, which which sounds wrong, but we, we made little uh, delightful little dumplings of joy. Uh, pierogi <laughs> is what we made. And, uh, you know, so, so we got together and we, we did that, and he says, oh, before I forget, I got this steak for you and uh, popped that sucker in a cooler, brought it home, and uh, I had I had a great lunch today. I did get out and do a, a little bit of fishing today, and uh, I say a little bit of fishing because I have been trying to find ways to kind of scratch the itch a bit, um, and I went out, and we'll discuss some of the places that I've been looking for specifically. We've got a little bit of open water. 
And there's a couple of baits that I was I was looking to kind of uh, experiment with um, and learn a little bit with, namely blade baits and uh, and you know small cranks, uh, finesse swim baits, things like that, and of course a trusty Ned rig by my side. Um, so you know I've been fooling around with a lot of different stuff. Could not get on any fish today. Um, I find that uh, well a couple of places where I was at today the water levels were really high, and I find when I'm dealing with that I find it's that much more difficult to. To, to be able to get them to bite um, or, or locate them because there's that much more area where they could possibly be. So it was uh, not a fruitful one for me. Earlier this week, I had stopped and uh, I realized, Sean, I think I made the joke earlier, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know if there's a market for it. You guys let us know. Hit us up in the comments if you think you would be interested in a full guided tour of Western Mass of uh, fall fish fishing uh, <laughs> because I apparently have the gift. <laughs> I've caught these things on all types of baits, and uh, it was the only fish I managed to. It was at one of these self releases as I went to go lift out of the water to uh, go grab them. Lots, and actually, it was the smallest fall fish uh, I've caught this year. I mean, some of the ones that I've I've caught have been absolute monsters, monsters for minnows. Let's just be honest about that. But just. Un unbelievable so i had that going on i uh, paid a little visit out to uh old glory outdoors to which i don't think i mentioned this sean i was a little disappointed in the holiday lighting display um that what was at old glory bunch of fucking grinches over there or what well i mean not only now understandably so like they are stocking shelves like crazy they've got a bunch of ice stuff over there they've got the real estate now to be able to play with some stuff I, you, you walk into the the new space and there's an ice uh tent right out in the open full full display like all kinds of stuff very very cool they were stocking shelves and rearranging hard baits and things when i got in there of course the new plat soft plastics room has like so much more room to like you know kind of take it all in you know the the rods have been moved to a different part of the store so very very cool like lots going on over at old glory but i didn't see any holiday lights on that sign none and mm. it, it was during the day, and, you know, I, I mean, I looked around, but I don't really see a whole lot going on. So it's quite possible that uh, that there's no uh, holiday decor over at Old Glory. And I'm, I'm wondering if maybe next year we should have a contest between uh, the partners on our show. Like, who can decorate their storefront that much bigger, that much better? I mean, we already know what Three Bells Outfitters can do with the float. Let's be honest here. Yeah. That float was amazing. Now, really, to hammer the point home. Yep. We know that you are a Western Mass. A connoisseur. Light judge. Yeah. You and I need to put on our most condescending outfits and faces <laughs> and eat food while they're decorating. In yeah. front of the stores. 100%. That's what we have to do. Yeah. And make comments like... <laughs> You think that's going to be good? Yeah. <laughs> you call <going>. that bright? <laughs> you call that cheerful? I think that's a really, really, really good idea. I think yep. that's a fantastic. I think that's what we should do. We should organize something like that. And then, you know, maybe we'll head on down to the the Jigs and Bigs studio at uh, 420 M Street in the, the lovely city of Agawam, right on the water, right on the water, you know, right alongside Bondi's Island. For twenty M Street, we have a number. <laughs> we have yeah, we have an address, a number address. If you if you search for it, that's what's going to show up. I mean, you guys are welcome to go there, but it smells horrendously, and uh, it's just a boat launch. But uh, you know, you, I, maybe we should decorate over there and put our inj inject ourselves with a bunch of inflatables. I have to ask, why wasn't it sixty nine M Street? <laughs> I think it was closer to the water. To go with 400 oh, oh, yeah okay. that's what i was okay. looking for and i was like that'll that'll work out good so so lauren from three bells jumps in she likes this idea she says challenge accepted which i that's that that response does not surprise me in the least i mean lauren uh two two things that lauren has in spades they, they, no short supply of um holiday spirit and competitive edge but she's all about it. So I think she's all about it. In fact, just to drive the point home, she goes, bring it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's going to happen is with me and you and our condescending judging as the lights yes. are going up, they'll be very focused on getting some lights up around a window. They'll have a ladder up. And all of a sudden, a half-eaten taco will hit 
the window and it'll start slowly dripping down yep. and they'll turn back to us and we'll just be motionless. And I'll, one of us may say something like, you better get that cleaned up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, what's essentially going to happen is that folks are going to turn around. They're going to look at the display we put together ourselves. And the only thing that's going to come to mind to them is using crack and cocaine to get high. That's what you say, you know, you know, but it's really insane. You could die. What are you thinking of? I mean, we have to, we have to really do this well, because I mean, I think while you're the lighting judge, I did make a comment this summer to Joe about, it was either Joe or Zach at Old Mm -hmm. Glory. They had some, some weeds that were flourishing in where their landscaping oh, area the little mm-hmm. tiny landscaping areas around the the uh the old glory sign out front yeah i made one comment and the next time i went back it was like manicured oh yeah oh i believe it i believe it. <laughs> but i was i was really surprised so i pull up and i was just like huh i'm like but i'm I, at the same time like i know that there's a whole lot of shit going on inside yeah and they're yeah. busier than hell so i mean that's ultimately like you see stuff like that going on that is awesome that's great news so i picked up some uh some baits while i was there i mean it was pretty much all i had going on was a little bit of shopping stocking up for some things and and then uh this weekend we had gotten together we had chosen a winner uh for our 13k giveaway uh, you know we had mentioned it before we had mentioned before about our 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 13k giveaway that uh we had we'd finally hit 13k and we set up the giveaway to go live for a week um it was out there we we ran the the giveaway in in, in fancy dress <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if any if anybody hasn't seen that, was it a post? It as was well a post. As, it was a post. Oh yeah, yeah. Check the, check the Jigs and Bigs account. There's a, a a post that is nothing short of filled with mirth. Oh yeah, from from Bobby and myself in front of my Christmas tree. We we found some some Christmas outfits. I I wear I have a T-shirt that has lasted me like 15, 20 years because I wear it once a year. Oh yeah, it's a great shirt. It just says "Make pierogi, not war," which. The sarcasm should not be lost on the fact that I am a retired military member. <laughs> true. Very true. So I I popped that on. We had some other stuff going on. We had a blast doing that. And uh, yeah, go ahead and check it out. Even, you know, even if you didn't win, it's just worth it. Oh, yeah. It was a great little video. And like I said, I think the uh, the, the, the headwear that Sean is adorning in this, this show or in this little clip that we put together, I love because it makes my beard look so dark in comparison. I was like, oh, this is nice. He's got to uh, wear that was, all the time. I was filled with elderly glee. It was good. It was very and good. Coming so, back around, uh, oh, Bobby, I'm sorry. Coming back ahead. around on, the, uh, on, the, on, <laughs> on Jerry's meat. <laughs> Well, I kept it quiet, but I also cooked up one of Jerry's uh, Jerry's venison offerings that oh, yeah. fired our way. Um, mine didn't go as well as yours. I had mine on the grill. I was watching it like a hawk, and then unfortunately, something happened. Nature nature called while yeah. the steak was like almost there, but it wasn't done, and I had to go do what I had to do. When I came back, the steak, while still edible, was uh, a little overcooked by my tastes, and yeah, just I've got a I've got a second one. Now that being said, every bite of that 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 pile of venison was eaten. Oh yeah, but I, I could have done better. So I, I know for the next round, and Jerry has already said, oh yeah. yeah, I heard him bragging about a freezer full of deer meat. So I mean, we got a you know, we're gonna have a conversation with with Jerry Multi House here about his full freezer. And how we can help alleviate that problem. I don't know if the steaks that you've got, uh, Sean, but the the steak you gave me looked like one of those stereotypical like cartoon steaks. Yes. With a giant like circular bone in the middle. I was just like, yes. oh, this is this is so good. Like it was absolutely dynamite. In fact, my uh, family and I we took a little bit of a a, a little bit of a ride up the shears uh, today Whoa. to scope some uh, some holiday lights. And I can say this much: Berkshire County brings the fire with their holiday lights. 
Berkshire County gives a shit. Huh? They really do. Like there was very few jeers and many many cheers about the things that we saw because we just we went up to Lee and we took Route 20 all the way back into Westfield and then we grabbed dinner on our way home and it was just oh man it was so awesome so awesome so we had uh, we had a good time out that way it was really nice uh, very like it's like 10 degrees colder up there than it is here and while we were on the pike on our way to the, the Lee exit we went by some deer and uh, and I said to the girls I said hey girls so you see that deer over there they're like oh it's a deer I was like now think about what you had for lunch today doesn't that look delicious and they were like <laughs> you're an asshole dad is basically what happened <laughs> And my wife just rolled her eyes, and I'm like, "Well, it's all good." But you know, it was it was awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, I made uh, I had uh, I made that for lunch. It was absolutely dynamite. I do want to congratulate the winner though of our of our giveaway because this is this is awesome. So I should before I, I I announce who the winner is, and it's on our Instagram. He's contacted us. We've verified all of the um, all the details regarding the contest. And if you watch the video, you'll see that there are five other names that pop up. Um, I do. That that on purpose because with with giveaways on Instagram, there's specific things that you need to do in order to enter. And some folks don't necessarily always complete everything that they're supposed to. So uh, it's up to you know us to kind of go through and audit all this. In fact, after we were done making the pierogi, I went through and I said, look, I have to go verify and make sure that this is all set before I post it and tag the winner in it. And uh, I got lucky enough this time around where it happened to work out, where that's exactly what it was. It was the first person who came up as the winner. That first name that was picked, they they had all the boxes checked that they needed to, and they are the winner. And that is, uh, we've got uh, a username, Hookset underscore weekend. Hookset is Johnny Nunez. Uh, he's, a, he's a Connecticut guy. So this stuff does not have to go very far at all, um, which is pretty awesome. So he's got a nice little prize pack coming to him, which I know that he is super, super psyched about. Uh, some of the prizes that he is uh, is is receiving come from, uh, well, we've got uh, a prize from Three Bells Outfitters, an awesome prize from Three Bells Outfitters. We've got a uh, prize from Hookset Hoodlums. Those, Both of those also Connecticut-based organizations and companies. Pretty awesome. Old Glory Outdoors providing some awesome stuff as well. Uh, and then we have some technology from Nakwa. Nakwa is uh, providing a, a, a power pack and a light, which is freaking awesome and then of course this time around we're throwing in a little something extra for johnny so congratulations johnny thank you for entering in and uh following all the instructions and in, in winning uh we had some close calls though that were in there for uh for for substitutes so uh, the reason why i put that stuff in the video so that you guys can see it is like your name can pop up and if somebody in front of you you know they didn't dot all the i's and cross all the t's and everything then we go move on to the next one in that order and instead of having to you know pay out and do the results again randomly this way i walk away with six people and i know that there's got to be somebody who can follow instructions in that batch of six so we work it out that way but yeah awesome so congratulations uh, thank you to everybody who entered it's awesome I think we had something like like 90 or 100 entries of different people, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. So very, very excited about that. Man, it's just been a, it's been a good week. Last week was so busy, like crazy busy. I had holiday events going on for corporate parties. I had just really important like housekeeping shit that I needed to do, like business-wise, all kinds of stuff. And I, I got to tell you, I'm really looking forward to this week here, Sean. I think that... Going into Christmas, like I have some stuff that I have to work on, you know, tomorrow, obviously editing, editing the show and stuff. And I have to uh, prep for trivia because this week at trivia is going to be the Christmas music round. Plus, I've got some other holiday stuff in there and, I, you know, get people to put on their holiday sweaters and do all of that happy ho, ho, ho shit and stuff like that. So speaking yeah. of trivia. Oh, yeah. We had, a, we had an amazing night on Friday night. My you knowledge had an amazing caused, night. Yeah. caused me to lose. It really My did. My knowledge it caused me to well not lose. Come in second. I I I used uh, I used some some integrity. Yep. Some, some as they say on South Park, some integrity. Some integrity. Ooh. Some, I didn't use some integrity while I was playing because otherwise I wouldn't have done as well. But I mean it, we've talked about me playing at your trivia games before. Oh yeah. 
and you and I had gone out to, we went out to breakfast that morning, didn't we? We did. We went to, uh, yeah. out to breakfast that morning. And actually, what's funny is this stems from the trivia night Thursday night. I mean, let me set that up. So mm-hmm. last week was a short week because I did, I don't know if I had mentioned it before, but I had a bingo game in Boston that was going on, which by the way, was amazing. I know last week I was kind of sweating it because of this whole thing with like software and everything else. Man, they had such a great time. It was so fun. Um, you know, and same thing as last time, the ride back was like 30 minutes longer because of all the nighttime uh uh, road work going on which you know it was it was a, it was a warm night i'm not surprised that there was that much going on but yeah three different times traffic got held up on the way back but it was it was great they had a blast doing it they want to do it again um you know and, and even even trivia they want to have that over and over and over again so this could be a great account for me i'm very very happy to be doing it um this is an amazing spot too so i did this game got that all straightened out and so that meant i was down one trivia night beforehand so usually what I do is I kind of like borrow the bonus question from the previous night as long as other people haven't played you know the current night that I'm on so I'll borrow this like and use them for bonus questions and it didn't work out with the math I think I I had messed up on Wednesday and I asked like Thursday's question or Friday's question and there's a lot of crossover between Wednesday and Thursday the people who play Wednesday there's a couple of teams that showed up on Thursday night actually there's like three or four in total and and two of them were there Friday night when we were when we we were there. So Thursday, I said, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the, the question that's earmarked for Thursday. I'm going to write one on the fly. And I said, you know, I never promote the podcast while I'm doing trivia. Not not on the mic, not verbally. Like I've got stuff promoting it on the the slideshow and the slideshow on the player's devices and things like that, especially with the live show coming up on the 5th. And I decided, I said, look, you know, I'm just going to go for it. So I did it one of these nearest wins questions. And I said, how many followers to the exact number does uh, Jigs and Bigs have on Instagram right now? And I, I had the same reaction for both nights. People have low expectations of what this show is capable of. What have you done to set them up that way? I know. Well, I mean, I don't think anything. Is it me? I mean, do they just expect that, like, you know? So when the highest numbers both nights were about 2,500 was about the highest amount that, that anybody had expected. And most of these folks, like, they're not going to listen to my show. They're not into fishing or, you know, and because of that, they're probably not going to see the entertainment value of what we bring, which I'm thankful all you listeners that do tune in and, and check out the show week after week seem to find. So that is awesome. Thank you to you. But I did this specifically as like kind of a flex a little bit. Like I was like, yeah, how many, how many, how many followers do we have on Instagram? And the one team that got like, when I said the actual number, there was like an audible gasp, like a really kind of thing. And it was like, yeah, this is kind of cool. So I had a couple of people afterwards that night talk to me about it. And they're like, so it's like fishing, like throw a worm in the water and fishing. I was like it's a little bit more than that, but that kind of, that fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Catching fish from the water and you know, all this other stuff. And I was like, check it out. I think you like it. We talk about a lot, a lot of stuff. And I'm like, there was a lot of like nineties pop culture references and things that we throw out. Cause we're essentially overgrown children of that decade. Yep. <laughs> and, a, lot, a lot of Western mass. Stuff. Yeah. And I had, uh, you know, you and I had met up the, the following day. So while we were talking, I told, I told Sean about all this and, uh, uh, he, he had mentioned he was coming out to trivia. So I was like, oh, so when I ask this, I'm like, ob- people obviously know that, like, you're a, you're on the podcast. Like, I mean, we, generally when he plays, he is Sean the Fisherman, you know, and he's wearing, like, Jigs and Bigs swag and stuff like that. So... Which is which is what we thought, yeah. Going in, <laughs> that's true, that's true. And I'm like, oh, all right, that that that's cool. So he's like, yeah, he's like, just go ahead and block my device or something, and uh, you know, it'll be all good. So I didn't block his device. I was like, you know what, fuck it. If he wants to, if he if he wants to get the dub, I'm gonna let him take it. And he didn't. He just sat and let that question go. No entry for that one question because I figured, screw it. I'm going to use this question again as an opportunity to kind of promote the show. And I'm actually going to do the same thing, uh, you know, this week and going forward with other games as a way to kind of promote the show subtly in the game, you know, and, and, and make mention of it. So uh, what did it end up? It was like that point, the points for that question, it's 25 points for that one question plus the challenge of which most likely with that challenge it was drinko you would not have done but 
I, I might have if I was close. I, I was that second round got me. I needed it, so I might have. He he. I think at the end of the day, he was. 20 points below first place getting no, that question oh was it 30 30 so i would have needed the drink oh you yeah. would have needed the drink oh oh man that could have been tough yeah i think you probably would have been all right i would have done you a solid and blocked the beer and the liquor so it could have been yeah. some kind of salad dressing spices mix you want to win a ten dollar gift card you got a fucking relapse <laughs> Um, hi, this is Bobby Rose Beef. I'm sorry, Sean the Fisherman can't be with us from now until the next six months because he's in rehab because I made him drink one beer and uh, he's been on the street ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh, I'm laughing God. About oh, God. Time. It's awesome. Not funny. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. So, yeah. Yeah, I've actually, I've had people tell me before, like, oh, I don't drink and I just, I block those because I have the ability to do that too. Or, or like, if it's a kid, sometimes folks, you, you know, believe it or not, in this day and age, they'll bring a young kid to a bar at like eight or nine o'clock at night. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you know, and I'm like, I just, if it's a kid, I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going to block these and this kid's, kid's going to drink, you know, mayonnaise and pickle juice or like mayonnaise and freaking whatever. Or they bring their 13 and 14 year olds and they're constantly answering, <laughs> answering questions with genital or Michael Jackson related yep. stuff. You never know. No, it's true. Um, I knew the night was going to go well because I hit the first question right and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And then the second question was a straight up 1984 Transformers cartoon question i'm yep. like are you serious i had that one down and then i just rolled i actually i think that was the best first round i've ever had oh easily yeah you were a first then, place in first round and yep and then yeah, the second round i learned a harsh lesson about the emoji that emoji round you did oh I, yeah the movies that is aimed at the youngsters and that kicked my ass and then uh third round i clawed my way back into third place until the last question and then i needed the last question to get into second and i got it i was if i was the person that got the last question yep and I was off. I was close. What was it? It was uh, shit. It was. I forget what that oh, one was. The surfboard. Oh, that's right. How many people were on the surfboard? Like, yeah, the, it was a record setting surfboard ride. The surfboard was 42 feet long. Yep. How many people set the record on the surfboard at one time riding a wave? And I think the answer was in the mid 60s, and I guess 58, and I was the closest. Yeah, it was. It was like 63 or 64. And yeah, I think you put 58 or 59, and it was like, you know, you figure a 42 foot, you know, surfboard, you're like, you're not going to get more than like 40 people on that thing. But well, I thought I, either they're, they're standing, you know, nuts to butts or they're staggered. That would help. That would help a lot. And then, don't, I don't know how wide that thing was. In the middle, there could be people up on people's shoulders. Yep. You know, there's that. So I don't know, that's kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, it was good. You know, Friday night was really, really good. Saturday morning, we got up and uh, and made some, we made some pierogi. We made quite a few pierogi. We did all right. Yeah, we did, we did. Uh, I think the final total was what? At or near 200 for, the, for three yeah. hours for basically four people. I mean- um, your wife left for a while because she had an appointment. My wife left to drop one of my sons off doing something else, a birthday party, I think, yep. for one of his buddies. And um, we had Chloe. Yeah, Chloe. Yeah. Chloe is officially Polish now. Yeah, yeah. Inducted. <laughs> Welcome Good. to the family. There you go, Culture. Chloe. Oh, my 17-year-old daughter. She's one of the, the – uh, there was a documentary, The Many Babushkas of Chernobyl. Obviously, I, I highly recommend you watch it. It's interesting. <laughs> like, so, yeah. yeah, a lot of Geiger what counters you, and stuff. <laughs> now, what did what was your experience of the annual Dominic Pierogi pinching extravaganza? What did you think? It was a blast. It, it was a blast. Um, you know, I definitely learned a couple of things about uh, rolling out the dough. Uh, you know, it's 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 a good time. It's definitely a good time. We made a couple of good varieties too. The uh, the farmer's cheese one is dynamite. Like I could That's eat those. Classic. Yeah, I could eat those by like the the, the gallon bagful. Um, the uh, the jalapeno cheeseburger came out unbelievably well. That was great. And I used bison for those. What part of the bison was it? It's fucking penis. Fucking penis. Fucking penis. <laughs>
Because that, was a, that yeah. was a new one. I threw the new twist in there with the bison. No, I like that. I like that. I like mixing it up, you know? Um, yeah. You know, and Sean and I had talked about the idea of, you know, because we, we, like with the OGO Invitational this past summer, when we had the Rocky Mountain Oysters, um, we, we had the idea of like doing some kind of like an exotic or, or wild game and exotic meat like wheel, incorporating something like that, making it a regular thing. So we'll, we'll see what this summer brings for our uh, exotic cookout you know well we might have just given everyone a heads up that there will be a meat wheel it could be it could be it could be a wheel of meat it could be a wheel of fish <laughs> could be it yeah. could, could be a wheel could be a wheel of paella oh, oh that could be see? exciting yeah i think they're all exciting that just could be different very kinds exciting. of exciting yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So let's see. What else What else do we have here? I mean, that was for my week. That's pretty much it. How, how was your week, Sean? Did you do anything exciting? I know I know that you were prepping dough and doing a yep. lot of that earlier on. Yeah, I prepped the dough. That was one day. Um, again, most of my fishing-related activities over the past couple of weeks have been a lot of network stuff, phone calls, yeah. this, that permits, you name it, this, that, and the other thing. And um, honestly, I mean – you know, Nelson's my right hand man and all this tournament endeavor crap that I'm doing. And he's, he and I have barely talked over the past couple of weeks. I give him a call once a week just to like touch in and say, hey, touch yep. in. That sounds horrible. Touch base. Touch base. Touch in or what is it? No, no, it's not it, uh, touch base or um, call in, whatever, whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's Sunday night. I don't know what's going on. But um, I barely talked with him over the past couple of weeks, just getting all this other stuff going. Uh, a couple conversations with Three Bells, trying to get a hold of Joe. Yep. Whoever the fuck that is, he seems to have vanished off the face of the earth. Um, hopefully he <laughs> listens to this and calls, lights a signal fire or something, does something that we we know he's alive. Because um, we have we have at, at this point I'm a little what? concerned that maybe maybe he's with Howie. He could be. You know, has he, he disappeared? Be. Has he gone that far where he's now shipped off to wherever Howie and, and Bobcat boob scratch are? <laughs> He might be maybe maybe he took that extra step and he is also out noodling for Gooch. We just don't know maybe. that guy. Yeah. But um yeah, we've got some uh some things that we're hoping to get in the works with them with three bells. Yep. For this to, to really prime everyone for this year. A lot of stuff going on. Again, uh and and what um I finally got word from Derek at Three Bells that uh I had a transducer issue with my kayak. Mm -hmm. That has been I don't know, ordered problem is in process of being solved so as That's soon good. as that gets back in if we still have some open water on like cape cod i might go shoot out there one last yeah, time but i, I think would. my i think my 20 uh 21 fishing i think the book is closed on that it's just the window yep. is is slightly open but uh i don't i don't think it's gonna happen i might be already pressing on into 22 but you know you got to do what I got to do. No, 100%, man. That's exactly it. And that's kind of what our Just the Tip is going to be about today. Like, what are your options before we have, like, safe local ice? You know, like, what are you what are you going to be doing? Um, I did do a couple of uh, last – I did pick up a couple of items after my outing today that I was like, I'm going to need these. Um, I ordered some uh, some fishing mittens that have the – you know, I, I told you before with, the, like, the flip over mitten and it exposes the fingerless gloves. Nice. Um, these that I found, I actually found them on Amazon, and uh, they have magnets on the back and in the on the back and up by the fingers of the mitten. So like when they flip over, it'll hold right in place. Very cool. Wow. Yeah, that sounds so. better than the Velcro ones that I've used over the years. That Velcro gets pretty shitty because it's just such a small, yeah, not even not even dime sized area of Velcro that it it it's. I don't know. It seems like it has a lot of problems sticking with that small area. The NRS ones haven't been as bad. I think the, yeah. the Velcro area is a little bigger, but that the other ones, the Bass Pro Shops ones I have, those are, you know, in a pinch, they'll keep your hands warm, but sure. if you're trying to fish with them, it's a little tougher. Yep. I was you know, surprised. So. I was like, this could be really great. And I, I, that's my thing. Like, there's, I, I, I am planning on doing some ice fishing this year, but I'm setting my goals much lower than they were last year. I'm not looking at doing this major send or anything and, you know, working all of that stuff out. In fact, one thing that did come up this week, 
you know, I forget who it was. I want to say it was Luke Routh. I think it was Luke who had, uh, he made, uh, put a post together and it was basically like, what are your goals for next year? And, and immediately it's funny. The first thing I thought of right away, I was just like, well, shit, I have this conversation with, with Emily, uh, from reeling them angling, angling co, uh, she and I talk back and forth cause she is huge into multi-species. Uh, she's based out in Wisconsin and kind of has this like running, like to go list of like catching as many of the species that are in Wisconsin as possible. I think that's very admirable. I think that is super cool. Uh, in fact, I had shared a post from, um, another, another page, one of my, my reposts, which I do all, daily actually. Uh, so I shared a repost and one of them was a list of, I think it was 29 or 30 different species. And I said, this is where I'm at. And I think I was like at like 13 or 14, which I was surprised by after going through the list. And, you know, and then I said, I'm interested. I think I actually tagged her in the post and I said, what's this like for you? And she went through and I think she's at like 21 or 22 or something like that, that were on that list. There's some of them are, you know, we don't have here. So, you know, I get that like gar and things yep. like that. Uh, but as far as the ones that were on there and she's like, yeah, she's like, I kind of thought I would have more than that, but she's like, Hey, that just means more for next year or, or, or to set my goals on. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly it. And her and I have talked about different species quite a bit and bowfin comes up often with me. That's on my short list of, of new species to catch. And she said, I'm surprised you haven't caught them. She's like, you know, I mean, they're, they're in your area, bowfin, Northern Pike. And what was the other one that was on that list? Walleye or Sauger, right? That's right. It was walleye. Walleye is the other one. And, and walleye are few and far between locally where we are. Yep. Um, they're, they're hard to find, you know, um, at least to my knowledge. So I'm. I'm uh, I, I only know of the Connecticut River having them. I don't know anywhere else it does. There might be somewhere out east that does, but to my knowledge, it's only the Connecticut River. Um, and that's up north. There's not many, if at all, any down south. It's It's. It's just more the environment's better for them up north towards the um, yeah. the New Hampshire border and the, the Vermont vor, bleh, the Vermont border. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as far as bowfin, I think there's only the Connecticut River and am I right on the Taunton River having them? I think that's it. In it Massachusetts. Could be. Well, I I know that uh, Lake Nashawanick in East Hampton does have them. They were introduced that three, there. That's right. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's so right. three. So three that's, places. That's one of the sort of one of the places where I was like, I should try this out. You know, let's see what we can do here. So when I think Bofin, like uh, it's it's just over the mountain from me. So I go there quite regularly. And in fact, so actually, I'll tie all this stuff together. So initially, that was my first reaction. Was like all this conversation I've been having with them about uh about different species and like you know what what's on my list things that i would just love to catch so that i can set some pbs with it and then work from there and i was like no 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 i know exactly what my goal is and lauren i thought of you when i came up with this goal that i put out there and i was like i'm gonna get on my kayak twice a week that's my Perfect. goal twice a week april to october you know, and primarily, I, I kind of want to do it like so. It's very selfishly, it's obviously for the fishing. Secondly, though, I just kind of want to do it for like health reasons. I want to get out there and be pedaling more often. I want to be more proficient um, for larger events and you know things like that. I will probably honestly get on this kayak earlier than I did the kayak last year um, in in the spring. So I mean, not crazy early, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to get out and do it. So I was like, yeah, I think that's that's what it is. And then, you know, I'll fill in the blanks. I mean, I I try to, don't tell my wife, but I try to fish every day. Um, you know, whether it's for like, you know, an hour, or I'll fish this one spot. I'm always carrying my gear everywhere I go. If I can buy a little bit of time and there's water nearby, I'll scout everywhere I'm going and, and try to like wet a line. So like, that's part of the reason why like, yeah, if I can get on the kayak twice a week and then get out there and do some bank sends in between, that's the way to go. Lauren chimes in. She says, love it, Bobby. I say, that's exactly, I like, that is my, my goal. I'm like, that's, that's the mission. If I can manage to do a minimum of twice a week, that'll be great. It'll be absolutely awesome. And then, you know, along with that, I think the adventure is going to get more and more intense. You know, I think that could be pretty good. I think what I'm going to actually do is line it up so that I count the number of weeks I'm planning on fishing, figure two per week, and that amount of trips out in the kayak, and I'm just going to track them in angler. Because it'll keep track of every single one that I've gone out with, and I can figure out, like, oh, these were all kayak trips. Boom, done. It'll, you know. 
That's the way to do it. Will that yeah. track distance that you've moved to? Yes, it will. <laughs> Home run, it definitely dude. So will. then, and I, then you I, got a baseline. It's funny too because when I'm when I'm in the kayak or when I'm in a boat, I feel like it's a much better um, measure of distance because I'll tell you there there are times like today was one of them. I went to. Three different spots that I had fished, three different spots that I had to drive to. And instead of starting and like to to get an accurate amount of distance that I've traveled, I should stop the angler app and then start a new trip when I get to get to that new spot. I just some days when I'm doing bank stuff, I'll just drive all over the place and then fish and just let it run in the background. You know, it makes it weird to look at it on the map afterwards. You're just like, wow, he's going for like 100 miles. What's going on? (laughs) It doesn't make any sense, but it kind of works off, you know. Oh, off-season kayak peloton. Mm, that's not a bad idea. It's not a bad you know, idea. We'll get we'll get me on the screen on the peloton. Get urging you to pedal more, but I'll do it as zany radio guy. Hold on. Hey, Bobby. Let's get some work in. Get that sweat going. Whoa. What about this? Like, what do you call that type of bike? Uh, recumbent. I have one. Like a recumbent bike. It's the same kind of sitting position as in a kayak, a recumbent bike, but put on the TV like the Bassmaster video game. You know, with the, I believe there's one that actually has a controller that's a rod. Numerous. So controllers and a rod, yeah. Yeah, that might be, you know, that might make for, if nothing else, Sean, that can make for an amazing, I think we need to make a reel. I'll bring my screen over. We'll set it up in front of your recumbent bike, and we'll we'll set it up to Eye of the Tiger, and it'll be you <laughs> practicing. It's me, Eye of the Tiger, the king of the fight. Oh, I love it. Oh, God. <laughs> Put your yak on a stand so that you can pedal. I, that might just prove to be a whole other level of comedy. Um <laughs> Well, I also don't know that I have, I'd have to do it outdoors in order to do it. I don't think I have a place in my house where I could fit that kayak. The, there's a lot involved with yeah. that, uh, the recumbent. Because then uh, what Lauren has basically done is she's opened the door to, hi, Lauren. Uh, me and Sean kind of had an idea, and we'll be down this week for a new kayak. <laughs> That's exactly it. We broke it in half. Clean in half. Don't ask how. <laughs> I mean, I could take the pedal drive and, like, you know, prop it up and just, you know, get a chair. Pedal drive. I could figure uh, a way to mount it with a couple of speaker stands. Yeah. Pedal, yeah, you could do something like that. I could that. do something yeah. like that. I'm just going to use a recumbent this winter. Uh, yeah. I am a fat ass and have to lose some weight because, you know, with, with knees, the more weight you have on you, the worse it is for the knees. And, and I've It's been true. In a, I've been in a, in, a, in a deep hole of pierogies, kielbasa. And assorted sweets and chips for about a month now. So we're gonna we're gonna work on that. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie chimes in and says, Wow, I always thought recumbent bikes were for skeet skeet. Why would they name it that? Lauren, I'm gonna need you to pro- uh, to break that down a bit more. Like w- m- give, give give us some more information. Um Nelson chimes in and says it's a great idea. Make sure you video that before you start. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's content gold. Well, yeah, the the start of, hey, we've got this great idea at ending with, thanks, Lauren. We understand the, the hull is on order. <laughs> Give us a <Exactly>. call. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It'll uh, be basically like us doing jackass. Now, we'll encroach on that realm. That's exactly it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Ellie, just Sunday night, the Sunday night Ellie show. I love it when Ellie jumps in with these guys because I I have a feeling that this is a uh, bouncing off of, or at least it pairs unbelievably well with our talk of all things pierogi this weekend. Uh, Ellie proclaims proudly that she loves kielbasa. And you know what? While we're on kielbasa, because we're talking about food, we're just going to roll with food this show because it is Christmas. Everyone's eating good. We ate good yesterday. Yesterday, also, you tried some new kielbasa. So oh, yeah. We have blue seal kielbasa out here. That has been the staple of Western Mass for decades. Mm-hmm. Okay, We grew up eating it. Um, lately, I have found some alternatives that I like a little more, but I do keep blue seal because it's just a standard and people are going to eat that, right? It's, a, it's, it's the perfect benchmark. 
Yeah, you know, it is. It, yeah, it's not like that. Just so you guys, you, all the listeners out there who are a not Polish or b don't live in Western Mass. Like, even if you're Irish and you live in Chicopee, if so, if you're having a birthday party or something, you've got a kielbasa sliced yeah. up into medallions, just as like finger food for people to eat. Right? Yep, that's like how much of a staple it is. So, and there, it's always a blue seal. Oh yeah, um, and blue seal. Again, for those of us who grew up in Western Mass, up until shit, I know they brought it back for a few years, but blue seal. Uh, was always setting year by year the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest kielbasa to the point where we had the kielbasa festival in Chicopee for, I mean, what, my my whole life up until the 90s. I think when I was in high school, it stopped, and then it came back in the 2000s in a different form. But kielbasa is a staple out here. Oh, so yeah. we don't, when I went out to the Midwest, and I do not mean the upper Midwest, like where there's a large Polish population and you've got actual crafted kielbasa i'm talking about walking into a supermarket and not having crafted kielbasa but having like something something farms mm -hmm. is the worst example that's not kielbasa that's garbage that's a hot dog yeah. i don't eat that shit so i was very offended so i used to actually have my parents ship them out to me either blue seal or whatever but getting back to yesterday blue seal uh has apparently just hired somebody in their r&d department and they have idea men now or idea women and uh, they came up with a jalapeno kielbasa infused with Cabot from Vermont, sharp cheddar cheese. Yeah. And it's a knockout. Let's it was just, good. Yeah. So I, I, I know there is a local butcher shop that's been doing that for years. Really? I, I was not aware. Strums in Holyoke. Strums. Not aware. Okay. Right next door to Mrs. Mitchell's. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I'll have to pick up one of those for, for this weekend's festivities. Delicious. They've been doing it for, for a long time. It's a little bit of it. Like, that's the beauty of it. You, Everybody's sausage is a little bit different from the next one. You know what I mean? Like, Strum's is a little bit different than Bernat's versus Janik versus Blue Seal. You know, we have this conversation. We have a very dedicated listener who is 100% Polish heritage. The one and only Polish Viking, Pawlik. I know. Paul. I know, And, you know, before we go any further with Paul, yes. you let me know a very interesting fact that he and his family have never invited you to pinch pierogi. I don't, they, like, to my knowledge, it's not a regular thing at their house. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not an, a regular, like, ongoing thing. But, yeah, absolutely. You know, he's, he has, he makes great pierogi. He really does. He's. We've had potlucks. That's one thing Holly and I used to have when we were much younger and cooler. We used to have potlucks regularly, and this feeds right into a comment that Ellie had made. Uh, they were always a lot of fun. We would always give kind of a theme. Sometimes it would be a wild card. It would be like, hey, everything tonight's going to be vegetarian. And I would invite my vegetarian friends and say, like, hey, guys, this is the one. You know, this is a good opportunity for you to come and do this. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is the one. It's one and done, baby. Well, probably the most popular one we ever did was we did a white trash theme potluck um, where I made a Brunswick stew that was dynamite. Like, it would have been better if I could have got possum but uh, did, or squirrel. Did, and I, you know. did anyone bring Kraft macaroni and cheese with, like, ketchup, <laughs> brand ketchup? Because <laughs> that's what you need. Yeah. Yeah, or a store, there were, a store brand macaroni and cheese with ketchup brand ketchup. There was a running theme. There was a tater tot casserole, tater tot and hot dog casserole that was out there, which is just out of this world. Um, and you know, I mean, we would do these regularly. It was so much fun. It was great. We had such a good time doing it. Um, you know, and then we would we would get it was it was a great way because people had to think out of their element, out of the things that they and we learned things. In fact, I'm going to share a little too much because it's probably okay. She's never going to hear this. Uh, Paul's wife is never going to hear this either, which is good. Um, <laughs> but Paul used to have a girlfriend uh, that uh, I think ruined him on macaroni and cheese. Um, because we had a potluck one time. And this potluck... <sighs> I think it was just like random items. There was only like like four different groups of guests kind of coming together. And yeah, <laughs> I know my internet's gone to shit, guys. I apologize. Um, it had kind of gone. Uh, uh, one of the items was uh, this, this. What are we going to call her? Let's call her Carol. Her name was Carol. And Paul was dating her. And she made macaroni and cheese. And I think Paul made pierogi. 
I think. And he makes this really great like mushroom gravy. Like just he, he loves mushrooms, you know. So he's like, yeah, he's like, I make it. It's not traditional or anything like that, but I like it. So I thought you guys might like it, and it was great. It was really good. Um, so so Carol, Paul's old girlfriend, um, <laughs> she was fun, but she was I don't know. I don't know what was going on there, but she made mac and cheese that was essentially cooked macaroni, right, with um milk, and. Uh, unmelted like shredded cheese on top <laughs> I, the the menu it was not meth food that wasn't the idea that's not where we were going with this meth food yeah i mean you know food you make when you're on meth it's like it was like a hybrid of a bowl of cereal meets a salad with pasta it was just, i'm like uh. what is going on with this so like we're like she's like oh maybe i just have to throw it in the microwave and that that surely did not help um so so paul wow. and paul would would rave that this was out of this world keep in mind he grew up in poland like mac and cheese isn't like something that he had all the time so um <laughs> uh this this has been a long-standing joke about that that mac and cheese incident for ye- this was years ago this was before holly and i were married like this is a long long time ago and it was just it was it was absolutely ludicrous like <laughs> this presentation some events happened i'm not going to disclose all that stuff for the show cuz that's on paul if he wants to share that some events happened and they 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 chose to go their separate ways mm. and and paul actually started dating a good friend of mine for a very short time and this uh young lady um has great skills in the kitchen and when she found out about this abomination of mac and cheese that had happened, she made two, at least, maybe even three pans of different varieties of mac and cheese and nice. drove over two hours from the south end of Boston to bring it out to Paul so he could enjoy this. And it was like, it was like. you know when they put like a cochlear implant in somebody's ears and they hear for the first time? It was the that kind of, of reaction. The fingers of God touched him. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, <laughs> holy shit, really? And yeah, I mean, out of this world. But but Ellie brings up a good point because she back here, she puts up this comment and she says, I think we should host a kayak potluck. And each kayak has a crock pot and we just travel to each other's yaks and eat crock pot meatballs. I'm, I'm not against that. Ready for this? Hit me. There's already groups out there that do kayak trips and they have picnic lunches that are that are crockpots. I think that they would be it. awesome. Yeah, there. Um, I, I actually one of my former coworkers um, actually still does it. I could find out the name of the group. We could pass that along for those of those of you who are out there that are outdoors men and women. Yep. And want to get out and just eat some food and float around. Seeing as we just basically turn this into the food show. Well, um, <laughs> it's I- it's the week before Christmas. <laughs> We're scraping the bottom of the barrel. All, uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you, your boy went out for for a send today, and the, the only thing he came back with was like, "I need some good gloves." Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we're we're catching fall fish. I'm making phone calls. I'm a telemarketer now. I'm starting up Bobby's, a guide service for fall fish. Come on, Bobby's Bobby's the fall fish whisperer. We yes. suck right now, but we we've been eating real good. <laughs> we have been eating real good. We have. That's what you do. You uh, put it all on in the winter, and then you pedal it all off in the spring. Yeah. I have a uh, I have a good story about pierogi. Uh, as me. We mentioned a few months ago I had a great aunt of mine pass, and and mm-hmm. um, her side of the family was usually the the her her house was usually the host house for the gigantic pierogi making um, spectacle that would happen every year. Now I can't be involved in that. I had to switch things around a little bit again because my life sucks, but um, my dietary life sucks. But when that was going, we found something out years and years afterwards. So they would make two kinds: cheese. Mm-hmm. And they would also make cabbage. That's all right. right. Couple couple stories about this. Now I told you one yesterday, but yes. I didn't tell you the I didn't tell you the great one. Oh, okay. I told you I told you a good one. I didn't tell you the great one. The good one was, <laughs> look, we you we can all joke around about any you know stereotype we want. Obviously, certain groups will get upset. I'm Polish. I'm going to say this. My aunt's Polish. She did some Polish shit one day <laughs> via stereotypes, and I'm saying this because I'm Polish. My aunt labeled all these bags of pierogies C. And when asked which ones were cabbage and which ones are cheese, a blank look crossed her face because she had labeled them C for cabbage and C for cheese. 
But not, not the aunt. Not the aunt that passed. This was another. This was actually one of my 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 aunts. My first aunts. Oh, okay. So we found out something uh, a few years ago. Yep. That I think might have changed the venue for the pierogi making. So we found out that the cabbage, the cabbage would be cut up, washed. You know, I think I think even brined mm-hmm. um, for the pierogi. So it was almost like uh, like a kraut. Like sauerkraut. Yeah. Yeah. So to dry it. Instead of laying it out, or like I did with my cabbage once for years, I would put them in a strainer, get all as much moisture out, but put the, put them in a bowl, put the strainer in a bowl, and just whatever mm-hmm. dripped out, dripped out, and then put some paper towels over them. We found out that my aunt, for years, was throwing it into a laundry bag and throwing it in the dryer. I've heard of people of those, doing that. Yeah. Well, what jokes do you think came out of that? Would you like a pierogi? Would you like a cheese, or would you like a pube? Because... <laughs> It's in your dryer, dude. <laughs> like the underwear was in there right before the cabbage. What are you doing? You're not so, wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. You're not yeah, wrong. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, man. We we stopped. <laughs> but I will say this: that recipe we had yesterday that you were raving about, the cheese ones. Yeah, I got that straight from my aunt. I just had to make some. Uh, I had to make some modifications for my own. And- oh yeah. Yeah, you liked it. It was good. So, my aunt's uh, my aunt's pierogi work will live on in numerous parts of our family because I make them, her sons make them. We we go nuts, pierogi so animals. You'll appreciate this today while I was preparing that delicious venison steak, courtesy of the one and oh Jerry Multi Species House. I say to Delaney, my youngest, she had a, a do- she had a two night sleepover. She was doing a, mm. a double nighter and she's like, yeah, she goes, um, you know, she stayed over and came home, uh, like about, I guess it was like 1130 or so she came home today and, uh, she's like, you know, I, I said to her, I was like, Hey, I'm making lunch. I was like, I'm making a steak and I'm making, um, I said, we got some pierogies too, if you'd like. She goes, oh, what kind? And I said, uh, there's cheese and there's a jalapeno cheeseburger. And she goes, oh, she's like, those sound good. She, I said, what do, you, what, what, what do you want? She goes, how about the cheese? And she says, I, and, and I, I go, all right, grab, grab the cheese ones. She goes, what are they labeled? And I said, well, the, uh, the cheese ones are labeled with a C and the cheeseburger ones are labeled with a C. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me like, and and it was like you could hear the cartoon. <laughs> like she could and then hear it. I I believe, I believe that you could actually hear the music coming out of her head, right? Pretty much. Want to play it? Pretty much. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait what? This this that I just played? Yeah. Using crack and cocaine to get high. That's what you say you know. But it's really insane You could die What are you thinking of? Oh my god <laughs> Yeah, so there we go We have a new theme song <laughs> Or at least your daughter does <laughs> Trying to figure out the pierogies So that was It was an interesting one Very, very interesting But um, I do like that idea Like, if well, Let's track down that group And maybe we can set up something up with them you know, like an extended one or, you know, I mean, if it's not that sort of thing and they're not interested in doing that, then we kind of take a, a note uh, from their book and kind of organize our own sort of thing on, on whichever body of water. We'll have to we'll have to tailor it to the show. So it'll be like mm-hmm. catching fall fish all day and I guide because I can't catch bass. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. What uh, happened? What are we doing? What is going on? I don't even Merry know Christmas. anymore. Merry Christmas. I don't even know. Um, yep. So big shout out to Josh uh, up in Wisconsin there. Uh, Wisco Bates has their first products that are like just about ready, like packaging and things, and they look awesome. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on some of that stuff. We have some news regarding uh, our, our live event coming up on the 5th of February. So tickets are selling like crazy. You guys, you, you got to get your tickets for this. Go to jigsandbigs.com. Um, they're available. There's a little banner on our landing page right on, on the homepage on jigsandbigs.com. Click that banner. You can get your tickets there. They're $10. Um, portion of that ticket goes to a significant portion of that ticket actually goes to make Massachusetts fishing spots great again. This is an, a fundraising event. Um, 
we're doing this uh, obviously to celebrate the 100th episode to practice something that we've got some other stuff that's that's coming up that's going to be really really great too and we want to kind of like get our feet wet before we like do it so this is going to help us kind of make it happen you guys are going to want to come check this out because the the format that we have lined up for this show is is dynamite but we do have uh, some folks who are already committed as uh, as vendors at the show. We're very very excited to have them. First off, we've got uh, we've got uh, good old Matt Thayer. Klondike Custom Creations uh, is is putting together a booth. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, he's got some stuff there that he's going to show off. Um, we also have this. Um, this we, we we've got oh uh, three bells outfitters of course they're going to be there with a booth so you can go and check that out and then we've got uh, old glory outdoors is going to have a booth there as well uh so we're, we're looking forward to having them too we have uh Nakwa, um has uh, we have this packet every everybody who who shows up every ticket sold you're going to receive this packet and and in this packet there's going to be a card that's got what we're calling a virtual vendor card because the the location the venue where we're having this event is it's it's pretty cozy it's space is kind of at a premium so we have virtual vendors there who are involved that are doing some uh either hooking us up with like promo codes or unique stuff on specific items or site-wide or you know who knows what the situation might be but we've got an aqua that it's already on that. We've also got Hookset Hoodlums. They're on that virtual vending card as well. So, um, you know, there's that we have about, I think, what, that's three, four, five. I think we have eight or nine more slots that we're looking to fill. Um, the reason why we have so many we're trying to fill is a portion of all these are going into, we're doing a fun little... Um, deal or no deal parody game for some awesome prizes so it's going to be great what we're going to do is we're going to give away all the prizes that are involved but we're going to pick three contestants to go through and actually play deal or no deal and uh, we'll see what they can win it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun we're, we're very 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 excited so go ahead get your tickets i know it sounds like oh but it's in february it's so far away i don't need to trust me tickets are like you know they're kind of at a at a, at a at a at a at a high demand right now because we only have so much space, so we got that going on. That is happening the fifth of February. We've also got uh, our our uh, Spotify playlist. Just added a new song on it this week. Uh, something that had had come up, and then I actually heard a couple other fishing parody songs that I wanted to add on just for fun. So I got to track those down and add those. But that's at Spotify. You can go ahead and check us out. Our fishing report, of course, uh, is bi-weekly. It's about to start having some info with ice as soon as we start getting some feedback from that. Uh, Tim Jakes got on and uh, th- just this past week and uh, put on a clinic catching smallmouth. And uh, so look forward to that. There's some really, really good info there. Tim has really kept the report going the yeah, past few he weeks. He really has. He has just been an animal. Yeah. Animal catching smallmouth. He's like, cold water, shit's given, zero. He's out there pounding small. He definitely so- is, man. Thank you, Tim. Talk about goals, man. He's he's out there getting it done. So that's going on for the fishing report. It's been coming out bi weekly. Um, I, I think if we if we see some you know serious uh, updates as far as ice and things like that, then then you know maybe you'll see. But it's probably going to stay by wait bi weekly until we get into the spring and things really start sort of picking up. Uh, and then you know we've got merch merch available at jigsandbigs.com that you guys can check out. Some great items. We do have some updated items that are coming out very soon once we get after like you know the holiday season and everything else like that. In fact, uh, I would I would. Really Really kind of like to launch maybe uh, a couple of these things on the fifth uh, with some uh, some cool stuff. So hopefully by by then we'll have everything in order to like let it rip and get all that out there. And then of course more, you know we'll go on more phone calls for me to make. I'm good. I'm on it. I know what we need to do. Oh yeah. So let me, yeah. I'll work. I'll work the phones. I like it. He's good with the fucking phones. Uh, <laughs> And then you know our Instagram Instagram giveaways that stuff coming up now this this giveaway here pushed uh, Sean's profile up significantly he's got a bunch more followers there so he's getting ready to pop uh, it's going to be a little while before we cross over to 14k uh, but you know once we do that once that happens we've got another giveaway for you guys and then same thing over the Bobby Rose Beef account too uh, we have a ways to go before we hit um, 3k over there but when that happens we will have a, another giveaway way pretty awesome very excited and again congrats to johnny uh hook set weekend great job man uh psyched for you you're 100 gonna love everything that you're receiving it's gonna be absolutely fantastic so 
Great stuff, man. I think that about wraps our first segment. Not too shabby. Not too shabby in the least, if I say so myself. Let's go ahead. We're going to take a short break, guys. We're going to come back, and uh, we'll be talking. Um, oh, one thing I do want to mention, and I, I forgot about this. Um, starting next week, you guys actually might hear uh, some new ads running. Um, and I don't want to drop the advertiser. I don't want to let any of that out or anything like that. So you guys, you know. Um, you know, any, anybody's freaking out or anything, they, they hear something that's, that's odd, you know, I mean, you guys have heard obviously from old glory for a long time. You've heard for the last year, you've heard from, uh, three bells outfitters. And every once in a while you hear from, uh, the, the company live bearded on our show, the company that, that does, uh, produces the beard products I like to use, which actually looking today, man, today was rough. Today was wake up in the morning, throw a little oil on and go out and do some fishing. It was, <sighs> The game is slacking. That's what's going on. But anyway, um, so those are the three that you've been hearing from. Uh, coming up very soon, you're going to start hearing more and more and more start filtering in. But we have a new one coming up. They specifically wanted to launch on next week's show. So we're yep. going to go ahead. And uh, and actually, they insisted that they start the show, like the lead, the first element of the show. So in case you tune in next week and you're like, what the fuck is going on? These boys, like, what's up? You know, it's not going to be the, the regular intro that you always hear. But we're going to go ahead. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Guys, let's wrap things up. We have, at least for segment one, we'll be back. We're going to talk about a couple of things. How can you scratch that itch before you have safe ice? No, we're not going to tell you to, you know, Get on thin ice or anything like that, trust me. But like if 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 you got a fish, like what can you do? What are your options? We're gonna talk about that. Uh we're also gonna go ahead and uh we're gonna talk about a little FTG segment right here that involves spot burning. Yeah. Ice holes. Yeah. Wicked ice holes. Wicked ice Dude. holes. Dude. Uh Dude. let's go ahead and take a quick break, guys. We'll be right back with more after this. Bobby and Sean now have a special presentation for us all. They'd like to give everyone just the tip. <laughs> what X going to give it to you? <laughs> wonder wonder where, uh, where Howie's going to be spending the holidays this year. I, I kind of do feel a little bad that he's out. I mean, begging for burgers in India. In India, with, of all with, places. With boob scratch. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see where the world tour takes them. I mean, it sound, from the sounds of it, it sounds like uh, they're just kind of making the rounds. I am yeah. curious about this whole goonch catfish thing, but you know, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Well, before we get into just a tip, or mm-hmm. before we before we give everyone just the tip, <laughs> um, would you do you remember that uh, that episode of River Monsters where Jeremy Wade went and investigated the man eating goonch catfish that had developed a taste for human flesh? I I do remember that one. Yeah, yeah. they're like they're like sharks in the was it the Bali River? I think Bali so. Bali River, Bali River. I forget which it is. I apologize for not knowing the name of the river, but they developed a taste for human flesh because of the, um, the 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 ways that tribes there or whoever lives there disposes of the bodies. Yep, uh, they burn them in pyres, and then they push them into the river. And the goon cat, goonch catfish scavenge human remains. Yeah. And then on occasion, they the bigger ones have managed to pull people into the water. Oh, yeah. Because they're so big and they've got teeth like sharks. Yeah. And then Jeremy Wade went goonching. He went out there and he got himself a goonch. They're giants. Yeah. They're giants. So, so if Alexi is out there goonching it up or noodling for goonch, I I doubt we'll see a 100% complete Alexi ever again. Yeah. Yeah. We're Something tells me. Winter, winter, we're talking winter soldier shit. When yeah. He comes back. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. You, you are not wrong. Not wrong at all. Uh, so as far as just the tip, like this is a great sort of example. Okay. So let's say you're in the Northeast and you know, you got to catch some fish. You just, you got to, or at least you, you got to at least try. You owe it to yourself. You know, there was a meme that I had shared earlier this week about hardcore fishing, and it was uh, it was put out by the, uh, the app Angler, and I had made a comment about, they were talking about, oh, hardcore, they're, you know, hardcore fishermen are the ones that are out there, you know, late into the year when the snow's coming down, and, you know, it's like they've got ice on their, on their guides and things like that. Um, you know, and I made a, I made a comment. I was just like, you know, anglers should really do a badge because they do a badge for all kinds of things. You take X amount of trips on your kayak, you get a badge for, you know, going out and doing this first time out on a boat, you know, they, they give you this, you know, you catch X number of species. They give you a badge for that, things like that. I was like, yeah, 
a hardcore fisherman badge, you know, for for when it gets cold. Like you guys would know what the temps are, you know, stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Well, um, if, if you're one of those, if you're like me and you're just like, I just I gotta go out and catch some fish. I gotta get out there and do do something. There's a couple things that you that you can do. Um, first off, is 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 find your local river. Um, rivers are a great place because the, that's it's the last fresh water that's going to freeze. Basically, um, you can get out there, and if you if you you know you can use this as an opportunity to get comfortable with river systems. You know, uh, based solely on the desperation of wanting to try to catch some fish. So. So there's that that you have working in your favor. Um, you know, also, you know, as far as when you are going out there, there's certain things that that you can do to increase your odds. Um, and like almost everything with fishing is there's exceptions to these rules. So like, you know, the, the tried and true, like, oh, downsize your baits and, you know, uh, fish much slower and, you know, um, you know, less is more as far as presentation. You know, there are still fish that will just bite out of reaction. So, I mean, if, if it's a matter of like you getting out there and throwing around a chatterbait because that's what you like to do then do it. You, you know, I mean, you, you might not catch a bunch of fish, but you may catch some. You may catch that one if you get, you know, that right cast and put the bait right in front of them. Um, there's also different theories. I've heard folks say that in cold water, fish want a, a, a large bite because they don't want to work so hard to, you know, uh, put out as much energy to to, to, to feed themselves. But again, at the same time, I've heard the polar opposite where it's all about downsizing and it's all about, about, you know, just, just a, a smaller presentation and that's what they're going to hit. So you got to do what you got to do and get out there. But a couple of things, first off, um, rivers are a great spot to look because of the fact that it's the last water that's going to freeze. Um, another thing to, that I, I highly recommend is look around in your areas at places that you wouldn't normally fish. Um, we've talked before locally about where I live. Uh, you know, there's this canal system that's here. Nobody ever fishes this thing. And I have caught fish in there. And lots of them? No, definitely not. And it's a challenge. But if it's a difference between, you know, not getting any hours in getting out and fishing and trying to at least get a few hours in throughout the week, it's a good way to kind of like fill that void. Uh, as far as getting out in your kayak or your boat, err on the side of safety at all times. Dress appropriately for the weather. You know, um, dressing warm is one thing, but you want to make sure that you're dry <laughs> more than anything. Like if you're, if you're, if it's cold and you get wet, you're, it's, it's a bad thing. Trust me. You don't want to play around with that. So, you know, invest in a base layer. You know, get yourself a decent, you know, uh, synthetic base layer, something that'll wick away moisture. The last thing you want to be doing is sweating, especially if you're like me and you're a fat shit and you're going bank fishing and you're lugging around a bunch of stuff. I was out today and I had one, two, three, four layers on. Uh, and and actually, I probably could have used uh, another layer as far as my pants go. Today, I actually ordered a, 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 base, player, uh, a base layer for pants. Uh, so this way I could throw that, those on under my jeans and keep myself a little bit warmer uh, as far as my legs are concerned but you know dress comfortably and wear the right stuff so that way you're not like you know going to sweat and then end up ultimately being hypothermic because you were sweating through layers and you know just firing body heat out every which way in your clothing so you know do what you got to do layers are great um stay away from anything that's like super big and bulky is like one giant layer you know one giant thick layer to insulate over you because it's it, it's 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 not as effective um so be safe when you're out there sean what about you like what do you recommend if somebody wants to get out especially in their kayak since you you primarily do fish from a boat you know what what do yeah. you recommend i'm gonna i'm gonna leave something off the table i'm not gonna talk about dry suits i know they're yeah. a good way to stay warm and if you if you're in a for god some unknown reason if you're in a cold water tournament might not be a bad idea to have a dry suit on but yeah. for a number of reasons i wear wetsuits because you, they do cause you in, in the exact opposite way they cause you to sweat mm -hmm. they keep that water trapped in between the neoprene and your body it warms it up you stay warm yeah if you go in the water the wetsuit doubles as a flotation device because you can't even three millimeter neoprene a whole six foot four fat ass like me is not going to sink mm -hmm. um with that on um and of course of course of course of course your pfd so um i don't know if you saw bobby uh this week 
Ken Wood had reposted the interview he did with Chad Hoover um, regarding his that. incident at Kentucky Lake. If mm -hmm. you guys can track that down, I believe it's on YouTube. Ken will tell you straight up he lived because he had a PFD on yep. in that cold water. Yep. Yep. 100%. Yeah, so Lauren chimes in here. She goes, cotton will kill you because it holds moisture. 100% it will. Uh, your best yep. friends when it comes to base layers are synthetic or wool. Uh, some folks can't do wool, you know, and they're just like, yeah, you know, it's a, the, there's a, a different type of brand. I think it's Merino, Merino wool is what it's called, and it's super fine and, like, real soft to the touch. It's It seems very comfortable. Um it's pricey, but you can get into some synthetic stuff. In fact, I would recommend that if if you didn't want to buy anything for a base layer, bust out your performance fishing gear because that stuff is is spandex. It's it's uh, it's it's uh, polyester for the most part. It's some type of a blend, but it's designed to wick moisture away and dry quickly. And that's ultimately what you want it to do. So if you do that, you will, you will, you'll put your, you know, just, just throw one of your, your favorite performance hoodies on or something like that. You've got that layer on. It's a great starting point. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually wearing my base layer now. <laughs> Just it's yeah. it's uh, a Carhartt, you know, synthetic base layer shirt. And I throw, you know, that on and then I'll throw like a T-shirt on over that. And then, you know, like something else. And I, e I even have a thermal hoodie and then I wear a down vest. I like a vest because then it doesn't like I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not looking to be like, what's the little brother in the Christmas story? What's his name? Teddy? It was, uh, Ra no, Ralphie and um, Ralphie was the older brother. The yeah. older brother was... Uh shit you're not gonna be like the little brother when he's like can't move his arms and he's like oh, i gotta pee <laughs> like you know i mean like you're you're in um a better sort of situation lauren also chimes and she says uh, merino is waterproof as well yeah it is it's 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 great stuff if you have access to it go for it i highly highly recommend it i've looked into some of the merino wool and it's nice it's a little bit out of the window of the stuff that i'm necessarily gonna gonna go and shop for right now but you know and again i know some people hey maybe you're vegan and wool doesn't work for you at all you know i mean hey that's cool Awesome. Go for it. In that case, and if you want to save some money, it's cuffing season. Go ahead and grow your own pelt. <laughs> and the little brother, and the little brother is Randy. Randy. That's right. You don't want to be like Randy from the Christmas Randy, story. Randy lay there like a slug. It was his only defense. I can't believe I forgot his name. How many times have we had the Christmas story shoved down our throat? I know. Oh my God. It's crazy. Oh. But I mean, so that's the thing. Get out there. You know, if you've got these random little spots where you're just like, ah, I don't know if there's fish in there, go and fish it. It's a great opportunity. In fact, if it's a small body of water, you're probably going to be able to find the fish that much sooner. You know, if, if you got to scratch the itch, scratch the itch. Do what you got to do. Get out there, you know? And I mean, you know, when it really sucks is when you got that skim ice and there's nothing you can do. So in that situation, I say find the moving water. Find your river systems. Go where there's some current. You'll, you'll be all set, you know? Yep. And what's really nice on this little segment here, this little tip, uh, so this, this little tip, this big tip we just... <laughs> we just gave everyone <laughs> pulled um, everybody with 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 my really you know i'm i'm going to just say physical inability because there's no other mm -hmm. good term for it i'm not i think i'm done bank fishing probably for the rest of my life cuz i again i could fall somewhere and and it's going to be problematic yeah um <clears throat> with with the 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 way my my joints are in the lower half of my body um so in the cold water you're out there pounding the banks and i'm still less frequently going out in the kayak oh yeah and for you know and, and trying to do this so I, I think everyone got two good points of view here if you're definitely if you're on the shore bundle up just like you're going out to do your driveway yep you know but it'd be be able to to move around and do stuff going out to shovel your driveway for me on the kayak bundle up so that if you go in the water prepare for that yeah don't say you're not oh, i'm not going to go in the water because you never know when you're going to go in the water that's exactly yeah, it and it's like yeah. i i've seen this a lot too even on, on on big boats and i've thought about this i'm like man you know i've seen it doesn't happen often but you see some people sometimes fall off of a big boat you know yeah 
Sometimes, uh, you know, I mean, it's like they just lose their balance, you know, just stepping up on something. Like, you know, if, if you're out there, even though it's 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 probably less likely that you're going to fall in from a larger boat, um, you know, you want to be smart about the things that you're wearing. You know, you want to block yourself from wind and any kind of uh, rain or, uh, or splashing at all, anything like that, especially like a bass boat. So be careful. Take, you know, everything, you know, dress for the environment, dress for the elements, 100% for sure. Make sure that you're you're dressed for the elements and, and safe. But uh, get out there, scratch the itch, do what you got to do, you know? And I mean, yeah, the nice thing is, is think about it like this. If if nothing else, if a, if there was nothing else that you can get out of this, there's no pressure right now at all. If you don't have ice and there's nothing going on, you got nothing to worry about. Get out there and, and, and fish, but be safe. I love it. I love it. I agree. All right. Let's go ahead and do this, guys. Uh, it is time for us to shift gears a little bit. We got a doozy for you. You know what time it is, Sean, right? <laughs> you know, I'd like to throw in another uh, segment here, or not another segment, but another vote for an FTG for this week. Xfinity, Comcast. <laughs> the fuck are you doing fuck to me, man? Them, fuck dude. you guys. Here I am. I'm trying to do this amazing show. I got Lauren claiming that we're doing impersonations of Natalie Wood. Um, you know, I don't know if that's I I I, I didn't get that joke, so I'm going to look it up and find out what uh, she's talking about, but um we're going to go ahead and go into this so along with Comcast, uh who else who else deserves a good round fucking? Well, let me tell you who deserves around fucking spot burners. Oh, when I say spot, spot burners, I'm going to focus on one particular group because I've seen this. Now, I gave you some examples of how I've seen this yep. over the years. Oh, uh, the last time we talked about it. Oh, yeah. Um, sometime in the recent past, um, Nelson contacted me and said, hey, there's some ice somewhere. And I said, how do you know that? And he sent me a picture of someone holding up an enormous bass on the ice. I'm not worried about the size, the length. I don't care. But apparently... Nelson let me know that this person went ahead and posted on a chat group and I saw where they were. I kind of knew a couple things and they posted exactly when and where they caught it <clears throat> with ice fishing. It's a different breed of angler and those guys and gals are constantly crawling across the internet, looking for information on those spots. This is the third, the third year. And I, I know the place is already getting punished where there's not even three inches of ice. Number one, it's not safe. No. And people are already out there and they're trashing it. It's just the place is going to be done until the spring. There's constantly, there's going to be people out there covering the ice and good luck getting out there to fish. So, yeah, I don't really know how to offer up some sort of solution to that. Like, just if you're going to catch fish, fine, put a picture up. I, I, I don't know what you want to do. Like, hey, look at me. I caught a big fish. Congratulations. I do that sometimes. If I'm oh, very yeah. proud of, say, a 25 pound carp that drags me around. On, all, on basically light gear during a bass tournament. That could happen. I could take a picture of it, but um, I get it. We're, we're anglers. We like to put up pictures of, of our catches, but don't. I mean, with ice fishing, if you put a, you put a spot up with that, mm -hmm. that place is done for the year in this part of the country. It is oh, yeah. done. I, I, I did, like I said, we, we, you and I talked about it, Bobby. There were three spots over the past like 10 years I know in particular. Mm -hmm. I know an internet post went up on a, on a chat uh, – a, 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 a chat group or whatever or a chat or whatever yep and within like two weeks that place was dead to the world you couldn't yeah. even fish there so just i mean keep it yourself just put up the picture of the fish and don't say where you caught it i don't know what else to say i mean it goes that it, it goes without saying with you know anytime you people are they're, they're proud of what they're doing you know what i mean like you, you catch an impressive catch or or maybe you you know i've shit i've i've caught fish before in bodies of water where i was like i wouldn't i don't think there's any fish in here you know I've, i i've never you know everything i've ever heard about fishing in this one space is just like you gotta you gotta be smart about that because you don't want you know you gotta think long term big picture you gotta think big picture because if you give somebody a little bit of insight you know especially with ice fishing as it already is like there's already a big gimme with ice fishing yeah the pre gerald holes man I know if there's a hole that's been there and nobody's fishing it sure they may have moved on but it may have just been from like the day before. 
They yeah. might add a fire day there before because there's a brush pile underneath or something like that. Like with ice fishing, you can go out and figure it out with even with you know what I mean. So it's like, why would you? Yeah, I don't know. It's just it, it's crazy. I like, yeah. and you've you've even heard me before, Sean. Like before, I'll say like, should I mention the spot? And you've said like almost every time, you know, oh no, absolutely. But there are times where I will mention the spot because I'm just like, this is not an attractive place to fish. Like you don't yeah. go here to fish. Like when I talk about the canals in Holyoke. Yeah, exactly. You but, know what but I mean. On the other hand, yeah, when you have places like the spot that was mentioned uh, on this post a couple weeks ago, um, the first people that are going to complain about how crowded it is are the people that posted it up in the first exactly. place. Exactly. So just just keep it to yourself. Yeah. Like if you, uh, would you do that in a tournament if you're a tournament angler? I certainly will. I've heard of people doing it, bragging about, hey, there's, I'm at this lake and I'm on top of a. I don't know, a brush pile or on top of a, a weed bed or whatever. And here I am. Well, all it takes is one person to be fishing with you and see that video. And you know, they know exactly where you are. Yep. So just, I, I don't know what to say. Don't, don't tell people where you're fishing. Yeah. It's just, you just got to be common smart sense. It. Yeah. Common so, uh, sense ain't that common. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Hey, if you're uh, telling everybody where you fish and uh, then you're upset about it, fuck you. Yep. Yeah, there's really there you nothing go. you can say about that. So, yep, that about does that for uh, for <laughs> segment two, guys. We're uh, we're gonna wrap some things up. We got a short one this week. Like I said earlier, we don't have an interview this week, but understandably so. I mean, this is like we're going into it's the week of Christmas. Like we're rolling into it right now, um, and things have just been nuts. I do have a couple of guests that I'm working on that we're just working on finalizing dates and scheduling conflicts and getting all that stuff together. Um, you guys know I don't like to drop names of who we're getting ready to have on the show so i won't um but these are some folks that i think you're really gonna enjoy and i think they have a lot that they can bring to the table so a lot of fun uh just another reminder go ahead and uh get your tickets for our live show happening on february the 5th uh can't push that enough guys it's it's what it's worth it we're working on stuff right now, hopefully, that you guys are really going to appreciate and love. Uh, one other thing before we throw it a break that we do want to mention is this. Uh, if you're not currently a jig head and you're maybe on the fence, you're like, I don't know, do I want to be a jig head? What's it matter? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do that uh, or that you get out of being a jig head that are just pretty awesome. First and foremost, you get first crack at exclusive uh, content. So when we record our show, we actually, in between segments, we kind of engage. Age. We also will bring on, and you've heard it in the show, we'll, we'll talk to the folks that are in the chat because there's an exclusive uh, live that's running as we're recording this so that we can engage with the jig heads. Uh, <laughs> We we also we've also lately had a guest chef on. It's true. It's true. It's true. But these are the things that we 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 leave it recording the entire time, and we you know there's additional content that doesn't make the original show, except for little tiny bits and pieces that we might pop in here and there. So. We're trying to have a blast with it, have a good time with it. So, you know, check it out. The other thing that you get that's really, really cool is completely exclusive content, stuff that we've never shared uh, on the show. So we did one where uh, we had a react video to a very embarrassing video from uh, a very unfortunate tri fishing trip that went bad and could have been much worse, but looked like it was going there. Um, we have that. We've had we have what's coming up is a sort of a a a, a a a retrospective on howie of all things howie we wanted to produce this primarily for a couple of reasons first off for the big fans who are really into the show and like what we're doing and are listening to this because that's how a lot of folks discover us they'll go and they'll start at the beginning and they start listening as things come up or you know we have another segment that will jump in with what we're what we already have going and we see a lot of amazing things coming so if you want to keep up to date with some of the best of type stuff, like we're doing this one with Howie, we're going to leave this over on our Patreon for our jig heads to check out. So it'll be an exclusive podcast just for that crew over there. It's uh, it's amazing. It's a great way for you to help out the show. Uh, it's simple. It's $5. It's a subscription service, $5 a month. And uh, that money goes immediately put right back into the show. So we utilize that to keep things afloat, get things running and, and make sure that, you know, all is well. Uh, you know, we basically take it all and we invest it right back into the show. So we appreciate that. That's huge. You're definitely a huge supporter for doing so. But if you do want to join 
All you have to do is go to jigsandbigs.com. You'll see a Patreon Patreon badge right there. Click on that badge, and you can go ahead and get right over to us and subscribe. It's awesome. It's a whole lot of fun. So we appreciate it, man. S- Jigs and Bigs stickers and Jigs and Bigs events don't grow on fucking trees, folks. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They really don't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And on top of that, um, there's one other thing that you can do. Every once in a while, we will drop a Jig Head exclusive discount. Um, sometimes whoa, this helps because it might be it might be some type of a promo code or a discount we're working with a partner on, and we want to give first crack to the Jig Heads before it goes public. How does this help you? items in stock Mm -hmm. i'm just saying sometimes it's worth it to be a jig head membership has its privileges we're gonna take a short break guys we're gonna come back we're gonna wrap up this show and then uh we will see you guys all right so don't go too far more coming up right after this Jigs and Bigs is proud to announce we're being supported by Old Glory Outdoors. They're a veteran-owned company that carries fishing and hunting gear. Plus, they're highly active in supporting veteran organizations and charities. Old Glory is an authorized dealer of favorite rods, FX rods, Guggen baits, X-Zone lures, Sixth Sense, and many more. There's a brick-and-mortar store located in East Brookfield, Massachusetts, but you can also order online at oldgloryoutdoors.com. They ship anywhere in the lower 48 states or order Order online and pick up at the store. When you order, use the promo code Jigs and Bigs, and you'll save 10% off your complete order. Plus, you'll help support the show. Make sure to check out the apparel line called OGO Gear while you're there. Old Glory Outdoors believes in the slogan "Start them young" to keep kids away from screens and enjoying nature. They've got a full array of live bait too. Check out OldGloryOutdoors.com and use the promo code Jigs and Bigs. Save some money and gear up now. Jigs and Bigs is proud to announce that we're being supported by Three Bells Outfitters. Located in Smith Cove on the Niantic River, TBO is Connecticut's premier paddle sports retailer. They're a full service shop specializing in kayaks and paddle boards for everything from recreation to tournament fishing. Three Bells is an authorized dealer of Hobie, Jackson, Feel Free, Native, and Bonafide kayaks, as well as many paddle board brands. Not sure of what kind of SUP or kayak you want? TBO offers free demos of all brands. Want to go for an extended test drive? They have a full service rental facility on site. Three Bells also offers a complete rigging service for your kayak with such brands as Yak Attack, Yak Gear, Burley Pro, Yak Power, Torquedo, and more. The sky is the limit. You can visit Three Bells Outfitters in person or online at threebellsoutfitters.com. They ship anywhere in the lower 48 states or order online and pick up at the store. Can't make it to the store to pick up your kayak or worried the freight company might might damage your purchase? Three Bells Outfitters offers a white glove delivery of kayaks within a 225 mile radius of their store at a rate less than typical freight carriers. They will deliver your kayak, set it up, and answer any questions you may have. Be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to tell them Jigs and Bigs sent you Three Bells Outfitters because life is better on the water. Hey guys, I often get a lot of really good feedback about my beard. Lots of times people actually will ask about what I use for beard care products too. For a long time, it was nothing other than a brush. But things have changed and my beard is styled better and much healthier than it's ever been before. The main reason for this is that I started using beard care products from livebearded.com. Right now, I'm using Live Bearded's beard wash, the conditioner, oil, and the beard butter. I'm also using their bar soap too. In all in matching sense, I should add. The products are 100% natural, and they don't leave your beard feeling weighted down or crusty. I've discovered livebearded.com on Instagram and ordered their sample pack of six different scents to figure out which one I like the best. I really enjoy the Gunslinger and American scents most. I've been using the sample kit, and I really enjoy it, and I've upped it and gotten a full lineup of all their products in the sense that I like. I realized the level of quality that wasn't there in other products that I've tried before. It really did make a huge difference. So I've got a special offer for you. Visit livebearded.com and use my code ROASTBEEF, all one word with no spaces, and you'll receive a 10% discount on your order at checkout. Try the sampler kit for just 
just 10 bucks or go all out and get the full lineup of great products. There's kits available too, and they're great for gifts. And you can even sign up for a subscription. Save a little bit of money, and you'll also find that you won't run out of your favorite beard care products. Check out livebearded.com right now and use the promo code ROSTBEEF to save some cash and look like the epic beardsman you are. Yep, well, you know, as such is the way all this comes together when we don't have a guest. Our third segment is uh, a little a little a little lackluster. I mean, we're we're putting a bow on this package of uh, fishing content, educational and entertaining goodness. So, that's a good thing, but uh, you know, yeah. It's not a package. It's a present. It is a present. It is we, a present. I'm going to speak for us right now. Ready for go this? Ahead, I don't go speak ahead. for speak us on all the time, but I'm going to go ahead and speak for us. And we just want to make sure that everyone has a great holiday weekend. Yes, brother. Yes. <laughs> and listens to every episode of Jigs and Bigs three times over the course of the weekend and gets all sorts of nice fishing related presents. Oh, yes. That will. Ang- that will, that will both be given by and anger your significant other because you will now be fishing in the spring. That's, that's all we hope every, you know, really everyone have a safe and happy uh, holiday season. Yeah. Get out there, have some fun. And then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll definitely catch you again in, uh, in 22. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I just fuck up? Are we going to, we have another show between Christmas and 20. 22 don't we we do uh we do and it's <laughs> yeah it's shit. well it's it's the look back is what that's it right. is that's it's right. it's the retrospective that's what we have to look forward to so you know 2021 is kind of an amazing year because it's the first year where we've been doing this show for the entire year from january to december all the way through and that's impressive and we've had a lot of really really great moments uh so we're recording the retrospective the look back at 2021 and that is happening uh a week from today actually that we're recording this a week from today we're gonna go and look back at at the year uh there are a couple of things we've got a survey that's been floating around that uh various people every once in a while go and like throw some votes on it's just some feedback of like favorite elements and things like that that we just kind of want to talk about i mean it's obviously you know the entire show doesn't hinge on this stuff so if you're not able to go ahead and you know throw your info over there we understand but if you could go ahead and uh and even if if you need the link if you don't see it mentioned on on uh, the uh instagram story or anything like that just go ahead and send us uh, a DM, and uh, and we'll send you the link. Or a Facebook message. That works, too. We'll send you a link so that you can go ahead and uh, and fill that sucker out. In fact, you know what? I should go tonight. I'm going to go throw it on Facebook because I feel like that those followers, and there's probably eight or 900 of them, I think they will jump right on that as far as going and, and filling that out. That is something that would definitely help. So, uh, you know, the retrospective is coming up. And then, you know, we're, we're looking forward to 2022 in a huge way. And 2022 is going to be amazing. Um, so let's go ahead, guys. We'll wrap it up. Merry Christmas to everybody. Have yourselves a very happy and safe holiday. And uh, as we always say, as we conclude this show, tight lines.